Let's consider a relationship between employer and employee. I'm going to write it on the board again. I'm going to make use of this. So here is my um, employee on one end. Here's my employer. And what the, what the line is, is just indicates a relationship between um, the employer and the employee. And I just want to ask the following questions. What processes occur? Now, I'm going to hold aside, um, despite the fact we did a lot of work on it, the political, the cultural, the natural. I just want to examine these few economic uh, processes. Well, first of all, between employer and employee, there's highly likely to be a uh, labor process occurring. That's certainly one of economic processes. Okay, let me consider um, one of the faster growing uh, um, uh, activities in the United States, business activities in the United States, which is police protection, guarding. Suppose that the, between employer and, and, and employee, it's a firm that produces protection, okay, protection of houses and factories, sports stadiums, and so forth. So there's a labor process here that's occurring, okay, by the employee, and the person, uh, engages in a particular kind of concrete labor, which is policing, times the productivity of policing, and the result is police protection for, you know, for a house or for a sports stadium or for a business, for a factory. So suppose the person engages in eight hours of policing, and over the eight hours gives eight hours of police protection, PP, eight hours of policing, and so the result is eight hours of police protection. Again, it's a fast-growing industry in the States. You know, the person has a uniform, drives around, looks to make sure everything is, is, is safe, or walks around the, the factory testing the fences and so forth to make sure that the property is safe. So that's a labor process that's being engaged here. Suppose, secondly, let's call that just number one, not in order of importance, it's just a labor process. Suppose also th the employee in capitalism, sells his or her labor power. Remember what labor power is. So here's an exchange process. This is the labor process. Here's an exchange process in which the person sells his or her capacity to work, okay, to, you know, to, to do policing, and gets a, a wage of, let's say, I don't know, 75 bucks. So the person sells her, his or her uh, uh, capacity to work receives a value, Marx calls that the value of his or her labor power, which in my case is, what did I have say, $75. Okay. All right, so not, no serfdom, no slavery. In capitalism, people have the capacity, the freedom to sell their labor power and receive a wage. Suppose there's another exchange process. Notice this exchange process is on the input side. Labor power is an input to the uh, employer. But the employer also engages in another exchange process, which is selling police protection on the market. And suppose that, that, that use value, that police protection, is sold for $100, okay? To a, you know, whoever is going to be the buyer um, who gets the use value of the police protection. And so the policing is sold, that is police protection is sold by this uh, employer, by this firm, and the, the firm realizes, or the employer realizes $100 of, of, of value. And that's the one, two, that's the third process, economic process. And I want to add one more, the one that Marx invented. So let me put this up here. There's a fourth process occurring, which is the capitalist fundamental class process. Let's not lose it. We, discuss this in the course. Okay. Here, uh, there is a, a still other economic process, one of class, in which the, the worker goes to work, produces $100 of value. And I'm, I'm going to assume here that the worker produces 100 gets paid 75 and hence there's a profit of $25 for the uh, employer. So the worker goes to work for eight hours, Remember, that, what, the, what is that? You could probably figure that out yourself now. That's the use value of labor power. That's what the employer gets. That's what's useful there. And suppose, in my example here, 
you know, after say six hours, three quarters, the worker gets paid $75, works two more hours and gets $25. That, that, let me do that again. The worker after six hours gets paid $75 by my assumption, but the worker continues to work for two more hours, six to eight, producing another $25 but remember the logic now. That's what the capitalist, the employer, acquires, right? That's the use value of labor power is the total value that's being produced here, which is $100. That's the, the buyer gets. That's what this eight hours yields. The eight hours yields $100, okay? 100 over eight, okay, times. So that's what it yields, and that's what the buyer of labor power acquires and gives back a portion of it to the worker, 75 bucks, and the $25 remains, the surplus value goes to the employer. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, let's, let's conclude. We have productive labor. So in this particular case, the laborers are productive. Why? Because they produce $25 of surplus. We have a capitalist commodity. Why? Because a piece of wealth is being produced for exchange. Okay. And of course, we have abstract labor and so forth. So here's an example in which we can say that the labor that occurs is productive because of the capitalist fundamental class process the present. We can say that it's a, it's a, it's a commodity because it's something is being produced for sale. Okay. Next step. Okay. So labor is productive of surplus value. Um, and we have a capitalist commodity. Next step, okay, and this is just to, to, to come back and re-emphasize this productive labor. I want to change just this. I only want to change this. And what I want to change it, and it's a good review for us, I want to change that to this fundamental class process, but to the ancient. Remind you, the ancient is the class process in which a single individual both produces and appropriates that surplus him, herself. Okay, that's different from capitalism, in which an employee produces a surplus that the employer, the capitalist, gets. In this ancient, the employee and the employer are the same person. So we, everything is the same. I'm not doing anything different here. Save for this class process, which in this case is the ancient. So the worker goes to work, sells his or her capacity to him herself as an employer, pays himself or herself $75 in wages, and that same individual gets the $25 of surplus or profit in this private detective agency in which no one works for the private eye and, and the private detective uh, doesn't work for anybody else except, except him or herself. Well, in this particular case, we no longer have a capitalist commodity. We have an ancient commodity, and if you want, Marx doesn't do this, but you could say this is an, um, uh, a productive of ancient surplus value. Marx typically res reserves the question of productive, unproductive to capitalism, but most importantly, okay, for this exercise, we have a different kind of commodity here, a different kind of abstract labor, which is that of the ancient, not the capitalist.